Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Dr. Papillon here with another video. This time I'm not wearing Lolita because I'm trying to show you my closet. So here I am. It's quite a big closet and I'm going to show you around in it. So um, first things first, over here I've got some normie clothes for well, I got some graduation gown from high school. I've got some stuff for interviews, some stuff for dates, stuff like that. That doesn't really matter. I've got storage on the shelves above here, but I'm not going to really show you the side because there's some personal information. I'm going to pan up so you don't see the personal information. That's where the attic is. There is no ladder to it. I have to bring in a ladder every time someone goes into the attic. So my um, closet is very temporary in how it's set up. There's also um, a big giant jutting thing for the stairs so not the best i'm gonna back up real quick um this mirror usually isn't here but i brought it in for some extra light for the moment this thing i usually don't keep in here but that's where my accessories are and i'll show you that in a little bit here i've got my petticoats this one's my big hoop skirt one it's okay if you hang hoop skirts that have built-in petties because the hoop skirt does most of the fluffing not this chiffon it doesn't do much at all actually it's really nice to just smooth out the edges, though. I've got a Party City one under here. Eventually, my Me Likes Tea one will be here, and I didn't hang this up properly. Kind of just got to fish for the right spot on the hook for it. You want to make sure that you actually have the hoop on it. And it is also caught on a hanger. This is one of the tips that I do. All of my spare hangers, so I don't have empty hangers actually on my rod, I just put it in this bag, and then I grab a hanger whenever I need one. Now, when I think of my Lolita section of my closet, first I think of this thing. This thing is a unit that I got from a fair at my school that had a bunch of local businesses. And there seems to be a local Ikea to my school. And I won this prize from like a raffle thing that they had. I organize this a very specific way. I'm gonna move some things right now. That's the light for the attic. And it turns. So this side is all my black accessories. This side is all my ivory accessories. Now, if you turn it the other way, I usually don't turn it like this. I just go to whichever side it's on because it's messing up the stuff underneath it. I have other colors. I've got a lot of weird colorful striped tights. And I've got a white side. These are just kind of here because they fit here. They're tan tights with black accents. Generally, it's wrist cuffs and wristwear. These are... Uh, opera length gloves. I don't really go with much though. I've got bigger accessories like headbands. These are um, wrist cuffs from ballet costumes I had that I thought I might be able to get into different costumes. I usually use this row for more socks. More socks on the bottom as well. There's also a black and white pair down there. This is all my multicolored socks. Over here, again, wrist cuffs in the top row, uh, medium-sized hair pieces. So I've got my ivory and pink feather thing, my ivory bow, this black bow, black socks, ivory socks, more black socks, more ivory socks. In the center compartments, this area sometimes changes, but generally I've got my veil down here, I've got my leaf headpiece, my black rose headpiece, I've got my beret because I didn't know where to put it otherwise, a small little clutch purse. A wig cap, I guess. These are goggles from my Ramona Cosplay. Now I need to readjust this because the stuff underneath it got messed up. Underneath, I've got a trunk that's full of things that are not mine, so I also have an accordion. That's my grandfather's accordion. The case is a little messed up. The accordion's safe still. I got my cotton candy feet shoes. Sometimes I don't put them back in the box, especially my black pair, because I wear them all the time. Here is my black cotton candy feet purse. It is in its nice little protective bag. I can just nestle it there. That's not where I keep most of my purses, but that one is quite large. I'm not sure where my other one is right this second. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Lena Gatto from A Gotcha Designs uh, suggested uh, to me in DMs that in order to store my body chains, I should hang them up like this so they don't get tangled. And uh, that was a great idea. It's pretty nice. I'm going to do more detailed shots of the actual dresses. I'm just showing you how I organize them. First, I've got my OPs. I've got my pink OP and my black OP. And generally, I have my dresses sort of by 
color. So I've got my blue ones together. I've got my black JSK. And then I've got my ivory and gray all together. The last dress is honey cake, which is in a garment bag with its bow. Because uh, for some reason I'm paranoid that I'm going to ruin honey cake. So it's in a bag. And then we get to blouses. Now, um, for some reason, I'm very particular. Hey, there's the ivory bag. And also my Ramona purse. Um, I'm very particular about how my blouses are. They go from ivory short sleeve to long sleeve. Black, the shortest sleeves to the longest sleeves. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess I don't need any more black blouses right now. Uh, I've got white. So, here's a short sleeve. A long sleeve, another long sleeve. I've got my colored blouses. I've got a purple and a red. Then I've got my black overskirt, my green bloomers. I've got my ivory, white, black boleros. You'll remember it mimics the shades of the blouses. I've got this little knit black bolero thing and a black overskirt. And then again, my bag of hangers. I need more hangers. Mm -hmm. Up top, this box full of wigs. I'll show you later. This is my Rococo wig. It's there because I couldn't fit it anywhere else. This is my honey cake purse. This is a flower veil thing that was my grandmother's. This is really tall, so I'm sorry if the camera angle is off. This is my witch hat. A love potion purse. My spell purse. I've got parts for my computer. Well, not. I've got boxes for the parts in my computer. And then some miscellaneous hats that don't go with my Lolita wardrobe. That, that's it. That, that is the extent of the closet. And now I'll get into showing you details, I guess. Okay, in order to show you my dresses, I took them out of the closet and uh, laid them on the back wall. I'm gonna stand in the middle because it, it kind of works right now. Um, these are my dresses. Let's back up. Here they are. Maybe I can actually bring him a little bit closer, but probably not. I'm gonna move this to its own thing. And we're gonna bring in redress to the camera, it sounds like. Also, sorry if you can't hear me as well, since I'm moving around a lot, I thought that the microphone wouldn't really work with this. This is my Sweet Mildred OP. It's uh, a Peter Pan collar style, instead of some of her other styles. It's got cute little uh, cotton lacing that's ivory around the wrist. There's an ivory Peter Pan collar around the side. A very nice elasticated waist on the back. You can't really tell in the front because the front is fitted. It's a pretty long skirt, again, with this nice, like, rustic country style cotton lace on the bottom. The main closure is that's elasticated, and there is a button loop to make the neck a little tighter. It is a lovely OP. It is one of my favorite pieces to cord casually, just because of how easy it is. Just throw this on a few accessories, a headpiece, and this type of dress, while it's quite... You wouldn't think this is my style, but I find that this dress is just so easy to wear out. The color's a little folded right now. Uh, it's just a really easy style to wear out because it doesn't scream Lolita when you wear it in a casual way. It just looks like you're wearing a vintage dress, and I guess that that's kind of the style of this dress in a way, is it just looks like a vintage pinafore style dress, but I love it. I It was my third dress that I bought. I bought it in the same weekend as my other two first dresses, and even if she's not the most versatile and she's not the most cohesive with my wardrobe, I can still find tons of ways to style her. And sorry that I call all my dresses she, but they are. It just makes me happy. And I like this dress. It's my cute girly dress. It was my first sweet dress. <laughs> I kind of joked when I first started the fashion that I had a gothic Lolita dress, a classic Lolita dress, and a sweet Lolita dress. And this is not a sweet Lolita dress. But it was sweet compared to my other dresses, and you'll see that as we go on. So again, this is a unnamed Sweet Mildred OP that I got from her at a local convention. I'm not gonna say the name because, like, I don't want like to dox myself. <laughs> let's be honest. And it's it's just a beautiful dress. I love her quality, 
This style of OP is really comfy and onto the next dress I guess because I can talk about it forever. This is my first ever Lolita dress, also a sweet Mildred OP, but it's a slightly different style. This is the style that most of her OPs are in, like most of her short sleeve OPs, where it's got this uh, double gathered waist. It's kind of hard to tell with the print. But there's two different gather points here and it's got these cute little cap sleeves a little bit of lace in the front the lace is beautiful by the way even if it needs to be ironed a little bit this bow just flopping all over the place i love this polka dot lace it's the type of lace that she used on i think the top of my ivory socks and i just i love it it's one of my favorite laces uh, this dress is also one of my shortest dresses again it's got that beautiful polka dot lace at the bottom so i really need to wear an underskirt with it or hopefully when my new petticoat appears, it'll be a better shape and size for this. One thing I don't really like about this OP is that the print started bleeding red because of my deodorant. So I need to be careful about that in the future. Wear some sort of armpit guard, get better deodorant. We'll figure it out. Um, but again, I love this OP. It's also really stretchy and nice and the material is a bit thinner than the other one. The other one is a really thick material. This one's a bit thinner, um, but the sewmanship is still there. Uh, sewmanship? It's still got the same great Sweet Mildred quality to it. I love the print. It's this beautiful uh, zodiac print with like these different like astrolabe type things, star charts. Not exactly sure, but then it's got the zodiac constellations over their stars. And I really like trying to pull out the blue in this dress because um, I find it's really obvious to go for the gold and black. I also don't have that much gold, apparently, even though this is my first dress. But I really like the blues in it as well. I think I want to get more of this blue-gray color. I think that would also look great with the funeral. So this is another Sweet Mildred OP and more of her usual style, but much shorter dress than some of the other dresses I have from her. Again, I love it. Even if it's a little hard to cord and the armpits turned red for some reason. Again, here you go. This is an A Got to Designs King of the Forest jumper skirt, but it was made with remnant fabrics from her original run of the navy colorway, and so it is a slightly different fit or um, cut, I believe. I'm not exactly sure about that. I don't have the original. Um, some of my favorite features of this is one it's a JSK, two full back shirring. We love we love a full shirred queen. Um, I really like the lace in the front. It's this really pretty lace. It's not exactly the same shade of navy, so it kind of stands out. It's got this double layer, so it's all floofy. Uh, it's a little crooked looking, but I also know that this was a sample piece, and I got it in a lucky pack, and it says that it might not be to the same quality as some of her other dresses. I do kind of miss that this dress doesn't have a lace trim at the bottom. I've got a few dresses like that, and while it's not necessary, it is definitely my preference to have lace trim at the bottom. I just feel like it makes it feel a little more finished. But I really like how stiff the fabric is, because um, once you have a small petticoat underneath it, it kind of puffs itself out, because it just kind of sticks straight out from there. So, a sample JSK that I got from Lena Gatto. Uh, she had a bunch of other dresses in the same print, but this one was a sample remnant piece from scraps that she had from the collection. And it came in a lucky pack, and honestly, a great deal. Pretty much all of Lena's dresses are great deals. This is the second ever dress I bought. It is a JSK, so it does actually fit like a JSK features this one does have a little lace trim at the bottom it's not as pronounced as some of my other dresses but it's still there it's still nice it's cute there's not any lace at the top though it does have full back shirring and adjustable straps this dress is a little big on me um i would say it's probably one of lena's size two dresses though she didn't have her standard dress sizes when I bought this three years ago. <laughs> Two years ago? Two years ago. Um, I wish it was three years ago now, and this year, this year should be over. I'm filming this before Christmas, by the way. Um, so since this dress is a little big on me, I find it a little harder to cord, but I love cording it. 
I think that this dress is way easier to cord than the King of the Forest JSK from her, even though it's bigger than me though, because it's got the navies, it's got this medium blue, it's got whites, it's got basically black, so I can basically pair it with black. And so I can take this kind of gothic, I can take it kind of, um, I can take it very classic to be honest. And it's just really nice. I loved this dress uh, because of the print, because of the Rome motifs. You guys might know that I'm a classical studies student, which means I study ancient Greece and Rome, as well as other things. I'm, I'm a double major, so I also have just other types of history as well, but this was really special to me for that. And so, while I really do like the King of the Forest JSK, I like this one more because this one just means more to me. And to be honest, they serve the same function in my wardrobe. So eventually I might sell the King of the Forest JSK, but I'm still really glad I have it. I'm really glad to just have everything that I have. It's great. I love all my stuff. I'm so glad I have all of it. I'm very lucky and privileged to be able to have as big a wardrobe as I do. But I do notice that there is that redundancy in my wardrobe of I've got two navy JSKs from the same seamstress. And they serve the same facet of my wardrobe. So that one did come in clutch for my holiday collection. And this one comes in clutch for other things I've done. So they do have different purposes, just they're very similar. Now we're starting to get into my most recent dresses. It just so happens that my uh, my older dresses are over here. And the King of the Forest should be after the Rome dress K in the order. But um, this is the Asylum dress K. Also forgive the outfit change, I just took off my jacket because my room is starting to overheat because the fan right there is turned off so it doesn't interfere with my mic. This is the Asylum JSK by Violet Fane. Again, this is one of the dresses that doesn't have a lace trim at the bottom and it makes me feel sad because it feels incomplete. Um, features. These weird flappy things on the front that I don't like. This thing, which I actually think is really convenient because it pops in and out, but it wasn't sewn on all that well. The snaps aren't all that well secured. Partial back cheering. Um, it is lined. It is fully lined, which is really nice. Well, the shirt part isn't lined, but the rest of it is. Um, I mostly just wanted this dress for the print. Not crazy about the quality. I've mentioned that in my unboxing for this video. I don't want to spend too much time being a negative Nancy. I've done amazing cords with this dress. Maybe I'll pop some up. I don't know. Did I pop any up? I don't know. I don't know how to edit. Um, my favorite cord with this, I probably covered the entire bodice with it, with a blouse, instead of wearing the blouse under the bodice, just to be honest. Um, and this is another fairly short dress, but since it's completely black as the main color, it was pretty easy to wear my black underskirt underneath it. But I like this dress. It was a dream dress of mine for a very long time. Unfortunately, just didn't live up to the hype. I'm still gonna keep it until I can find something that I like better from the Asylum series. But right now, this is this is it. I might alter it eventually to make it something I like more. Uh, the closure is a zipper, by the way, which is really nice because um, I wish the funeral JSK had a zipper. That dress is tight on me. Ever wonder why I haven't worn it in a video yet, even though I got it like a month ago? Because it doesn't really fit me. <laughs> even though it said it would. And I'm sad about it. Um, it's, it's not easy to get on and off. This dress, while it's tight, I can get it on. That's one problem that I've never worried about with Sweet Mildred or Lena. Their dresses fit me. Their standard sizes fit me. Like Lena has standard and plus size and then she's got sizes one, two, and three. I fit in Lena's size one. That really helps my self-esteem, because I don't feel plus-sized, and apparently I am in Lolita. <sighs> this dress doesn't help the self-esteem. Funeral doesn't help the self-esteem. My sweet Mildred and Ain't Got Your Designs dresses, they make me feel nice and skinny and pretty. And that's what matters. I'm putting asylum away now. Hey, guess what? It's a dress that fits me, because I got it custom-made to fit me. <laughs> This dress is from Sweet Mildred. It is a custom-made tarot jumper skirt. She sells a version of this dress on her website when it was up, her Etsy site when it was up. But right now, she's down. 
Mine will forever be unique though, because I've got a black lace trim about three inches from the bottom of the dress, because I specifically asked for it. I wanted to make sure that this dress was long enough that it could fit over my hoop skirt, because my hoop skirt is kind of long even on the shortest setting. And so she made it long enough for me, she made it to the measurements I wanted, and she put it on her dress form for me and said, have any comments before I send it off? And I said, I don't know, it just, the skirt feels empty. And she tacked on a piece of lace and was like, does that help? And it's like, Millie, you're a genius. And so mine has a little bit of lace, the very bottom. Um, this is a full back shirt, JSK, adjustable straps. Um, I have to change where the buttons are if I want to adjust it, but that's not the hardest thing in the world. I can figure that out if I really wanted to, but it pretty much fits me. This bow on the front is removable, unlike the ones on my, um, the one on my Black Zodiac OP. I love the lace at the top of this. It's this beautiful rose lace. There's a rose trim right on top of it that moves into the uh, straps. Rose trim at the bottom of the dress. It's pretty art deco lace, the very, very trim of the dress. Beautiful print. If you want to hear more about it, check out my unboxing video for it. She's a beauty. She fits me like a dream because she's made to my measurements. Custom sizing, man. And Millie didn't even charge me extra for custom sizing when I wanted a custom dress. This is the dress, this is the price the dress would have been, even if it didn't actually fit my measurements. Beautiful. Yeah, it took months for it to happen, but I am, think it's worth the wait to get a dress that I love, that fits me. <laughs> I am not fat. I am an average-sized American woman, and we're just built different. <laughs> hey, guess what? It's the dress that doesn't fit me all that well. <laughs> Beautiful dress. It, even if it's uh, faulty, if you want to hear that story, again, watch the unboxing for this dress. Um, I love the details on the front, even if it's droopy when it's not worn. Love how it makes my titties look like a sausage when I put it on. I love how it makes me feel like a sausage when I put it on. I'm kidding. Partial back shearing, no closures. I just have to squeeze my body into it like a sausage and then rearrange things so they don't look awful. Beautiful dress though. <laughs> I love the appearance of the dress. I just don't love the appearance of the dress on me and it makes me really sad. So I've got like a 101 centimeter bust. But when I read the listing for this on the website, they said, if you are between sizes, size down, because it'll look better on you. And I'm like, it does not look better on me. So, um, if you've got the same exact JSK in gray, but in the bigger size and you want the smaller size, let me know. Maybe we can, like, trade or something. Because, um, I've never worn this outside of my house. I have taken off the tags, but I've never worn it outside of my house. I would love... To have a version of it that fits me. I will warn you that there's a small defect on the dress though. Again, watch my other video to figure it out. <laughs> but there's the female JSK from Violet Fane. I love their aesthetic, but man, their dresses are not on my <laughs> on the top of my list. The top of my eight dresses. And now I'm gonna put this up and I'm gonna bring out the final dress. You might have been able to tell just looking at the wall of dresses that this one's a lot shorter than the other dresses, but this is Honey Cake by Angela Pretty. Does it need an explanation? Probably not. Um, I don't wear this dress that often because it's not my style, but it makes me really happy to have it in my closet and to be able to hold it and cuddle it and wear it, even if it doesn't fit my style. <laughs> She's real cute. She's got this cute little lace on the straps. They're adjustable straps in the back, not in the front. Um, full back shirring. She's a plus size queen. She fits me kind of comfy. Um, I wish that there were an actual close. I wish there were an actual closure on it, but it's roomy enough that I can get in anyway. <laughs> There's waist ties. Not my favorite thing. I. I've tried wearing them. I'm awful at tying them. Nobody in my household knows how to tie them. I don't really have Lolita friends, except for my one friend, Mary, who recently got into Lolita in like October. So I've got no one to help me tie my waist ties. <laughs> Maybe when I'm allowed to see my calm again, they'll help me. 
because I'm inept. Some of my favorite details about this dress, pancake lace. And a pancake on it, or at least a cake. I think it looks like pancakes. My boyfriend thinks it just looks like a cake. Let me know what you think. There's also, in here, somewhere, pockets! My only dress with pockets. Ain't she a beauty? Um, I've mentioned it before, but next time I get a custom-made dress, I'm asking for pockets. That was a mistake I made with my Sweet Mildred dress, as I custom-made it. No pockets. Next time. <laughs> next time. Pockets. Um... The front waist tie is not removable, by the way. I love this crisscrossing and all this brick rack. The little cute bow here. The little lace trim there. She's a beauty. There's pockets on both sides. I just pointed out the one on the other side. Let me find this side. Where is it? Where are you? There it is. They're invisible pockets that are just kind of like built into the seam. So it's a little hard to find them unless you know what you're looking for. Those are all of my eight dresses. I don't have any more coming at the moment and to be honest there's only one particular dress that i really want at the moment i'm not going to jinx it by saying it out loud on the internet at least i've totally said it out loud to my boyfriend and my friend mary hi guys they don't watch my videos unless i ask them about them it's okay i understand oh also the waist ties they also have pancake lace um so like the dresses probably aren't going to increase that much in the near future, at least for the next six months or so. But I've got a lot of dresses to work with, and um, they're all beautiful in their own way. And besides a few dresses, I wear them all differently. I've also got quite the spread of dresses, because honey cake, a really sweet dress. A silent? That's a gothic dress. You can't argue with me that it's not, even if I try to style it in classic ways and then this dress straight out of classic this dress straight out of classic yeah you can try to style it other ways they're classic dresses so um i do have quite the variety in my wardrobe apparently if i were to expand my wardrobe right now there is one branch dress the one that i will not name that i'm interested in and we'll give you a hint that it comes in the pur colors purple green and i think blue maybe another one the original release had more colors but i'm talking about the re-release that fits me that's another hint um so that dress that would be a dress k i want a i want more solid colors a little bit but i want to make sure that they're textured and stuff but i'm also not sure if i want solid color jsks or ops I think I actually want at least one long sleeve OP, and it's probably going to end up being Sweet Mildred because I know that it'll fit me. And, uh, your girl's got some shoulders. I used to do archery, so, uh, I'm muscly. A little bit, at least. And, um, that's how I would expand my dresses. Again, I'm definitely considering trading my funeral for a bigger size funeral in the gray colorway. So like, if you are my sole dressmate, let me know. We can figure something out. Otherwise, I guess I should get into the next, uh, the next category of my wardrobe, which is probably gonna be blouses. Not sure I'm gonna hang them, how I'm gonna hang them up, because I've got a lot more than eight blouses. But we'll figure it out. I'll be back soon. <laughs> Welcome back. I can already tell this is going to be a long video because I've only done the wardrobe tour, the dresses, and now I'm on blouses. So uh, let's try to speed run the blouses just a little bit. I know it's not going to be that speedy though because uh, your girl can talk. I've kind of separated them out by ivory, black, white, colored. So I'm going to get the ivories. You get it? I'm tickling the ivories. Yeah. Sorry, bad joke. The piano's downstairs, not here. Um, this is a ivory and kind of white blouse. It's got some white trims and buttons on it. I believe it's the Popcorn Blouse in Apricot by 
Ji Zheng Zhuan? Ji Zheng Zhuan? Ji Zheng I don't know. This tag doesn't say what it is. This is lowly times on the actual blast. But, um, the listing on uh, Devil Inspired said something else. It's, it starts with a Z, though. Z-H-I something. It's a cute little Peter Pan collar. It's a little ruffly, short sleeves. These sleeves are not as stretchy as I would like, but they are fairly stretchy. Um, the bottom of the blouse is kind of ruffly. It's got this really pretty design of the white pearl buttons showing through. And there's white lace on the sides. It's a little bit small in the boob area. So are most of my button-down blouses, though. So, well, not the happiest with that. That is a theme. So I just have to be careful about that. This is a size XL, by the way. I'll let you know if there are ones that have certain sizes on them. This is a ivory bishop sleeve blouse. I think it's from Crucis. Not sure. Got it on Devil Inspired. It was one of the expensive blouses. It's got the biggest, puffiest sleeves. And they uh, taper down to a cuff. It's got a nice big Peter Pan collar. You can learn more about this blouse on my Devil Inspired unboxing. It's a little bit short, so um, you can't. You pretty much have to tuck this into something else, into a JSK or into a skirt, because otherwise it, it kind of ends kind of short. Doesn't really cover much. It's got these really pretty buttons down the front. Again, it's a little tight in the boob area because the girl's got a 101 centimeter bust for some reason. I don't, I don't know. I guess I just got big ribs because I don't got the biggest boobs. Black blouses part one. The short and medium sleeve blouses. First, I think this one is also from... Yeah, Ji Jin Yuan. Zhijin Yuan? I don't know. It's got this petal blouse collar. It's called like the petal blouse collar or something. But it's like a petaled Peter Pan collar on both sides. It's nice and stretchy. No buttons down the front, so it doesn't look too weird on me. Um, again, stretchy in the sleeves. Stretchy at the bottom. It looks really cute when I uh, corded it over Asylum. Way cuter than the bodice of Asylum, at least. Uh, the back has a little button to tighten it. No other closures. 10 out of 10. This blouse is a good blouse. Fits good. Good blouse. This blouse is an Alolita blouse. I got it at a thrift store um, for a pirate costume I did when I... Oh man, the deodorant really shows up on camera. Yeah. I don't always wash my blouses if I only film a video in them. Um... So this blouse I got from the thrift, stop, thrift shop for a pirate costume I did when I worked a haunted house one year, a few years back. It's from the Brand Express, it's a size large, it is just like a flowy peasant blouse style with a little tie up neck, and there's a little keyhole because it's tied up. It's got these lace inserts that go down the front of it, and also down the side of the sleeves. The sleeve on this, it goes down about to my elbows comfortably, but it's kind of tight on my elbows for some reason, even though it's a little stretchy. I think it's just because that's a motor-tastic part of my body. It moves. Ambulatory? Is that the right word for it? It's a part of my body that moves <laughs> a lot. So not a Lolita blouse, but I pretty much only wear it with Lolita nowadays. So this blouse. This blouse is a blouse that I stole from my mother from her medieval costume. Like, she wore a medieval costume one time for Halloween, and I stole this blouse. It is, um, not labeled at all, I don't think. Okay, it is, it is. Spirit Halloween. Yeah. It's an adult medium slash large. It's got a stretchy neck, stretchy back of the neck. Not the stretchiest in the arms, but it's got a nice kind of, like, flowy arm thing. Nice flowy arm thing. It's gathered at the bottom. It's really shiny in the front, so I pretty much only use it for the sleeves. I have worn it under my Zodiac OP whenever I want to add sleeves to that because the um, 
This is a little bit of an off the shoulder blouse. So it really looks nice with that because the blouse uh, sleeves are off the shoulder and those I can put on top of the, um, on top of those. And so you don't really get the weird bunching of the sleeves together. I just think it kind of flows naturally. I also wore this in like one of my favorite coordinates of my Rome JSK where I wore my Ramona blue wig and it was kind of like a gothic way of styling my Rome JSK. This was under that and I thought that that was a really cute cord too. So not a little lead blast, definitely from Spirit Halloween. But if you got a little lead main piece, you can kind of make it work. I'm not gonna lie. Ghost worthy, short to medium length sleeve black. Okay, so now we're into the longer than medium length sleeve blouses in black. This is another blouse that I have from the thrift store. It's not lovely at all. It is from Denim 24 7. That's the brand name on the tag. It is a size 12 women's. It's got this weird um, collar area. So it's not the best for Lolita, but I've made it work. It's really frilly on the front. There's a lot of buttons. It's got a very frilly bottom. I mostly love it for the sleeves. If I could just cut the sleeves off and get a better like bodice area of this blouse, I'd love it. Cause it's kind of like these mock princess sleeves. They kind of go out in like a triangle shape with a lot of lace. Though this lace isn't best lace. It's kind of like a bad lace, but um, this was one of my warmest blouses for a very long time, so I wore it anyway, even if it was a little weird. This blouse does not work quite as well as the Spirit Halloween blouse, but I've got better blouses now, so I don't need to wear this one as often. Silver linings, right? Yeah. I just got this blouse in the mail the other day in my Taobao order. If you want to see about that, look at my Taobao unboxing video. This, this entire wardrobe post is just me letting you know about other videos where I talk more in depth about these things because like I can talk forever. If you want to hear more about a particular blouse, I'm telling you where to find them. Um, I got this on Taobao. It's from Yulia. It is a size 2XL I believe. It doesn't have any buttons down the front. It's beautiful. It's got these cute little sleeves. And a nice little lace on the bottom. It's got a beautiful cute pan collar. It's frilly on the bottom. It's nice and warm. Not quite as warm as that fake one from 20, Denim 24-7. But you know, nice blouse, good blouse, perfect for when I get skirts eventually. Deja vu, are you seeing double? Didn't I already show you this blouse before? Yes, but in ivory, because I've got a problem. This is my Peter Pan collar blouse. Uh, not my, pff. yeah, it's a Peter Pan collar blouse. This is my bishop sleeve black blouse with the pearl buttons. It's kind of short for some reason. Again, comments about ivory blouse, Goes to black blouse. Great blouse. Love it. A little bit weird in the boobs. Most of my button down blouses are for some reason. I got that. This is my longest and probably my very warmest. Uh, cause just it's thick and it's polyester so it doesn't breathe like my cotton blouse does. But um, there we go. I've, got, I've also got this blouse. Okay, on to white blouses. This blouse is kind of like a whitish gray for some reason. I got it from Belladonna Lolita at a convention when I got all my first Lolita stuff. It is from the brand Diamond Honey on the tag. I didn't know that when I bought it. I only found that out about like a month ago. It's a cute little short sleeve blouse. It's chiffon, so it's really see-through and breathable. I really like the details on the sleeves. It kind of mimics the uh, detail on the bishop sleeve, but in a shorter form. It's got a little ruffly collar. It's cute, it's see-through, it's cropped, so can't wear it with skirts. <laughs> I don't really know how much I can say about this blouse because I feel like every Lolita has this exact same blouse for some reason. Let me know if I'm wrong, but like, you have seen this blouse. You know this blouse. You probably know how this blouse feels just by looking at it. It's not a bad feeling. You just know because every Lolita apparently has a blouse exactly like this. I feel like this is a staple in so many wardrobes of short sleeve, white, chiffon, cropped blouse. Mine just happens to be from Diamond Honey, one of the cheapest Taobao shops out there I've heard. There you go. This blouse. Great workhorse blouse. If I was wearing white more often, but I don't wear white that often anymore. So, ah, I don't know, I've got it. It works. Should I make the Deja Vu joke again? Because uh, it's happening again. I've got the same exact blouse in black. You already saw this video. Again, 
cute little sleeves, cute little Peter Pan collar, all my blessed up Peter Pan colors apparently. Um, inside of that is just a ruffle. Little ruffles on the bottom, the little see-through, but not too see-through. It's warm. It's it feels like almost completely natural cotton, maybe not. Cause who knows, it's from China. If you want to know more about this blouse, see my Taobao unboxing haul. Remember when I said my mom had like a medieval Halloween costume? It was more like a phase of hers to wear medieval Halloween costumes for multiple years. So this was one I stole from a, a white medieval blouse. It's got um, these weird sleeves that are chopped off in two places. I want to add lace to the bottom of this and maybe around the collar. The collar is just elasticized. I think it's meant to be off the shoulder, but I don't usually wear it that way. No decoration on the bottom, no decoration around the blouse at all, really, except for the sleeves, which are not really decorated. But, um, it got me through some rough times of not having actual Lolita blouses. So, for that, I will thank it. And I will keep it in my wardrobe until I realize I never wear it anymore. Which will probably be soon. We're on to the last blouse category. This one will be the speediest, hopefully. Because it's my colored blouse. I only have two colored blouses. I might as well show them to you at the exact same time. They're both from Lena Gato at A Gato Designs. This one's purple. This one's red. I got them in a lucky pack. See my first A Gato Designs lucky pack unboxing. They're cute little lace crop tops with cute little tiny sleeves. Um, they're kind of comfy, very good for summer. I don't know how to wear them. But I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> They're real cute. I just, I'm, for some reason, I'm not good at adding color to my wardrobe. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Just, it, it ain't there yet, folks. I'm working on it. But these, these blouses are like the exact same. I think the purple one's a little shorter than the red one. But I think that's mostly just because they're sample pieces from uh, Lena. I think they were like $25 to $35 or something on our store if you wanted to get them for yourselves. Um, great blouses. They're fun. Here they are. So, we're moving on forward. Next category is whichever one I film next, probably. See you then. Welcome back. This is taking me a very long time. I hope you liked this video. We're moving on through. This is the miscellaneous garment pieces set. That size black things, that size other things. Let's move on through. Black bolero. This one is a long sleeve bolero with a kind of stiff lace. It's got little roses on it. Again, around the collar, roughly around. It's real cute. It's chiffon, so it's not too uh, heavy weight. Real cute. It's got a tie in the front and a button. It's kind of stretchy. It's from the brand Yilia on Taobao. If you want to learn more about this blouse, we have the two blouses just right there that look exactly like this one, but in other colors. Look at my Taobao unboxing haul. Hopefully, let's move on to the next bolero. This one is from Old Navy. It is a size large. I got it from a thrift store. Like, I get most of my things. Remember, guys, for your normal clothes, try to get secondhand if you can, because, man... Clothing waste is awful. <laughs> I know that's weird for someone who collects a fashion, but like, try to like wear your clothing into the ground or donate it or resell it to a new home. Don't throw away your clothes until they are rags. And even then, if you can use them for like cleaning rags, do it. This is just a cute little knit bolero that I got from the thrift store. It's um, off brand, of course. It's got a center closure from a hook set up. I like to wear it over OPs usually, but I can try it over JSKs. The sleeves are a little weird for Lolita because they're just straight sleeves and they kind of like end right above my elbow, but it could be worse. <laughs> this is a Sweet Mildred black overskirt. Um, Got a beautiful art deco lace on it. I just love this lace. It's also got this detachable two-way clip tool bow that I just clipped on sideways because I didn't feel like using the safety pin and last time I wore it I didn't wear it with a bow. Uh, it's really great for adding to an OP. Most of this section is 
added to an OP to make it look different. This one is just an overskirt, so you're wearing on top of your skirt. If you want to see more about this, look at my Sweet Mildred unboxing. <laughs> Do you like not so subtle plugs? Then you love me. Watch all my other videos. Because honestly, this video I'm probably not going to say much because it's a wardrobe post and I'm just trying to get through all my videos. Get through all my clothes, you know? This is a peacock rum overskirt with two ruffles. It is too big for me, but I wear it anyway because I messed up when I got it custom sized. Remember when I said that custom sizing is great because you get it to actually fit you? Only if you submit the right measurements. It's too big for me, but at least it's too big rather than too small. Like my dress case. Uh, overskirts, they're great. If you've got a really long petty, it covers them. If you want to make your dresses look prettier, it does that. If you want to feel like a Rococo goddess, you might be able to make it work. Get an underskirt. They're great. Just, I want one in ivory too. I want one in white too. I want more underskirts. They're great. And this one is chiffon, so it doesn't add too much um, warmness to your cord. Though it is kind of heavy because it's um, multiple layers. It's also just nice quality. But uh, Peacock Lorem. They're good for other things besides just wrist cuffs, but also the wrist cuffs are like chef's kiss. Get their underskirts too. <laughs> They're great. These are some green and white polka dot bloomers. Feel free to look at my underwear right now while I'm showing you. Um, they don't fit me all that great, so I don't wear them all the time, but I wear them occasionally, especially when I'm wearing honey cake, because then it's just a little extra layer of green surprise if I flash my petty at people instead of just wearing black bike shorts or gray bike shorts under my Lolita. You can't get bloomers. You can also just wear shorts. But let's be honest, you can also just wear shorts. <laughs> but it's nice to have them. I got them in a lucky pack. I'm not complaining, even if they don't fit me all that great. So, bloomers. <laughs> These two boleros are exactly the same as the black bolero over there, except for this one's ivory and this one's white. They're both from Yelia from Taobao. Look at my Taobao unboxing video. This one's got... They both got these cute, uh, where is it? These cute little bow buttons rather than the black, uh, shiny button that the other one had. They're gorgeous. I love them. They make me feel pretty. And I don't have to wear a blouse over with these. Or I could wear them over OPs. I make my OPs look different. Those were miscellaneous garments. <laughs> okay, welcome to the floor in front of my closet. I've... Now I've got my purses to show you, so uh, let's begin. This one, I didn't make a video about this, um, because it's not really a Lolita purse, but I've put it with my Lolita for now, hoping that one day I'll be able to make a cord that works with it, but I think I need more pink for that. This is a Love Potion purse from Universal Studios in Orlando, from the Harry Potter world, I don't remember if it was Hogsmeade or the other one, um, Diagon Alley was the other one. Um, but it's apparently from Danielle Nicole. It's an Amortentia purse. It barely holds anything. Like, uh, I'm, I can fit my hand in there, kind of. So I can probably fit my phone, maybe like lip gloss in there. Not much. But it's got a nice little rose gold chain. She's a cute purse. I wanna figure out a way to make her work for Valentine's Day. We're figuring it out. This. I also didn't make an unboxing for this because it's not actually a Lolita. I got this from a costume shop at Halloween this year because I wanted to go see what things I could get for uh, Lolita that were good enough but not bad. Like this is purse. It's not a main piece. You can kind of make it work. This is a book of spells. So it kind of looks like a little magic book. Um, it's black, silver, and gold. So it really looks good with my zodiac dress, which is black and gold and kind of like a silver blue. It unzips like this. It's got like a little pouch in it. There's no real pockets on the inside, and I can't really hold small loose things in it. But it zips up. It's a crossbody. It kind of droops if it's um, got anything in it because of how the crossbody works, but it's not bad. I think I got it for like 15 bucks from a nearby Halloween store. This 
this is my honey cake purse. Why do I have a purse for a dress that I only wear when I want to be sweet? I don't really want to be sweet that often. I don't know, but I love this purse and I don't think I'm going to get rid of it. So, um, it's mine. It's like brand new. There was a few small damages so I could get it for a good deal. Um, if you want to know more about this, I got a video on unboxing it. It's my honey cake purse unboxing. There's a small little pocket on the back. It doesn't do much. You open it up, it's square. There's a small pocket that doesn't do much. You basically have to tip the entire bag upside down if you want to get anything out of it because you can barely do anything once your hand is in the box. But boy, does it look cute. So I also keep it in that cotton candy feet shoe bag just to keep it safe. You know, be good to your bags and stuff. Next are my actual cotton candy feet bags. If you want to know more about either of these bags, check out my cotton candy feet purse unboxing. So, here is the Spooky Bat Academy bag in solid black on black. It's got buckles right here that are actually snaps. You open it up, you basically have to turn it down, upside down to get anything out of it because it is so skinny. Um, it actually fits more though than my other bags, so it, it still is slightly more useful of a bag. It's also just a cute little bat bag, and even then the bat is quite subtle, so I can wear it with most of my gothic cords if I want. I haven't gotten much use out of it yet, but I also haven't been able to wear Lolita outside of my house in months. If I have, it's been to run errands and or go out to dinner with my boyfriend because we try to support a lot of local businesses and local restaurants and stuff. So like, I haven't gotten much use out of this bag, but she's a cutie anyway. Like the Spooky Bat Academy is the Frilly Bow Academy? I don't remember the name of this bag. It's the twin bag, but in ivory, and it's a sweet version instead of a bat version. Um, exact same bag. Again, you pretty much got to turn it upside down if you want to get anything out of it. Uh, I've got them both set up as backpacks, because that's what is easiest on my back. I do have a chronic back condition. No, I don't want to talk about it. Yes, that's why I'm sitting on the floor to talk about my purses instead of standing right now. Hi, I'm back. No, we're not talking about the body chains right now, we're talking about shoes, I think. But I got out everything within mostly arm's reach for the rest of the video, so I can just try to knock out the rest of these sections. Shoes should go by pretty quickly. I only got three pairs of shoes, and um, two of them are the exact same pair in two different colors. First, cotton candy feet, charm ribbon shoes, and cream shiny. There they are. They're kind of cute, they've got low heel. I've got the same color in matte black or the same style in matte black. These two are basically my workhorse shoes, especially these ones. Um, when I first started Lolita, I pretty much only used a pair of black pumps that were completely plain. I don't wear those with Lolita anymore because I've got better shoes. The other pair that I occasionally wear with Lolita are these burgundy Mary Jane. They look a lot brighter of a red in the camera than they do in real life. They're more like a dark wine color. These uh, look like Doc Martens because of the yellow stitching around them, but they are knockoffs off of Wish that I found for a cosplay I did the day that I first bought Lolita. And so I was wearing these shoes and these are the only Lolita adjacent shoes I had, at least on me, because I had to drive to the convention. I didn't bring all my shoes with me for my first coordinate. And I still occasionally pair them with honey cake or other red coordinates I did, like my Guru Asylum cord. Um, the buckles on these are fake, but they're not even fake in the normal fake way. So this is a buckle. <laughs> you can move it technically, but not really. It, it doesn't do anything. The real thing is, there's this hook. And I hook the, uh, just slide it on behind the buckle and that slides under the buckle and that's how it latches. It's a really weird shoe. They look a lot brighter in the video than they do in real life, but I do have these and I occasionally wear them with Lolita. So there are all my Lolita shoes, all three pairs. And now I'm 
move them out of the way to move on to the next thing. I might as well do the body chains right now since they're in the frame. These are the My Lovely Bones Body Chains from A Gotcha Designs. I got one in the black colorway and the white colorway. I think this is my old bones, my lovely old bones, and this is my lovely burnt bones. Technically, are the names of the colorways. Lena told me to hang them up on hangers to avoid tangling, and I do that because I think it works. They're beautiful. They really bring up the OTT of my cords. Um, I haven't really got a chance to use the black one yet, but soon. Let's do hats and big head. Okay, so I've got my hats and my big head pieces out. First, I'm gonna start with something that isn't Lolita, but I have now worn in a Lolita cord once, and I kind of store it with my Lolita anyway, because I don't know where to store it otherwise. And it is this 50s style flower hat thing, like a flower pillbox hat with a cute little veil on the front. This was handmade by my dead grandmother and I took it from her stuff when she died and I don't know how to wear it but I really like it and it reminds me of her. So the top of it is like a few little of these light blue velvet bows and a bunch of like white flowers and more of those velvet bows. This little white veil, it's got some holes in it because it's old. And if you actually look at the bottom of it, it is this green grow grain ribbon that's tying together green pipe cleaners that she tied around and then she just glued the flowers to it. And I'm like, honestly, that's a mood. This is an adorable hat. I just don't have that much light blue and white and stuff to wear with it. Uh, it's also really weird to style with Lolita hair because it's not as tall as you usually want. So the way that I found to pair it for my uh, Christmas video was I put it on top of the weird uh, puff ball on top of my Rococo wig. So it had a bit of height to it because of the wig, and so it kind of helped out. This was one of my first Lolita accessories. It is a Sweet Mildred black and gold veil headband. So it's got this beautiful corsage of like black and gold flowers, beautiful veil. It's a little stiff for my liking, so it doesn't flow as naturally as I want. Like. Like, it, it, it moves, just not as well as I want. Like, it, it sticks out still. And like, sometimes it's nice, but like, sometimes I want it to be a little flowier. It's beautiful quality though. I'm just, I have a hard time finding ways to style it. But, one of my first things that I ever bought in Lolita, and I'm not getting rid of it right now since I've got stuff I can cord with it. This was the headpiece I wore for my first ever cord because I got the veil custom made for me because she did not have a black and gold one at stock but she did make them. So I ordered it from her at the con I went to and she said since you wanted to order it at the con and I didn't have what you wanted in stock, like I saw like white and gold ones and I saw just plain black veils but I wanted a black and gold so she was like I'll send it to you free shipping, you just have to pay the normal con price for a veil of this style. It was great. But I had to wait for that to ship to my house, which wasn't going to be at the convention the next day when I wanted to wear my brand new Lolita cord. So I found in the artist alley there was a lady who made uh, these giant hair wreath things, headbands. Um, it, it just kind of bungees like this where you can tighten it that way. And I got two from her. This one is black roses with little blue eyeballs in it. And I wore this in my first ever cord. And I also got this leaf headband one, which is really pretty. I, this one, I braided the ribbons so that it would just be easier. Cause I wear this one more than I wear the black one technically. And it's just really cute. The leaves are getting damaged as time goes on, but I still think it's kind of, the lady who makes the wreath was not a Lolita specific uh, artist. I don't even remember who she was, but I thought it looked nice and occasionally I pair it with my bigger, more OTT cords. Next is a simple black beret from Sweet Mildred. It's got a lace trim and a removable velvet bow on the front. She gave this to me at a freebie when I ordered a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff from her over summer break. Um, and so this is a nice beret. I still don't know how to style it. I've tried. I don't know how to make it look as poofy as I want it to. Let me know if you've got beret tips. Maybe I just need longer hair. Maybe that's the problem. 
or longer wigs rather. This is the last hat I've got and this is my Sweet Mildred Black Witch Hat. It's a cute little tiny witch hat. It's got a little tiny point. It's got a bunch of flowers, a lace trim, this removable black bow on the back, a big old black feather thing. It's real cute. I wore it in two different witch cords. Yeah, I wore it in two different witch cords this year. I remember this thing from the uh, top of the video when I showed you the inside of my closet? Well, let's uh, make our way through this now in detail. I guess let's do wrist cuffs and wrist wear. This is one of my first two, I ordered them at the same time, pairs of wrist cuffs ever. I got it about a year after starting Lolita from Peacock Girl. It is this little black pair with a little gold star and some black beads. It's got a cotton side and then more of a traditional lace side. They're getting kind of stretched out because they're they're my workhorse pair. Um, I think I'd want to get a standard pair of just black in the style that I have most of my other wrist cuffs in. But I really like these and I think they're nice. They really work for me. Wrist cuffs are really one of those things that I will recommend to every beginner. If you want to look more like a professional Lolita or more of a put together Lolita because none of us are professional. Maybe Misaka, Mana. This is a pair of ivory wrist cuffs that I made to match my Pink Sweet Mildred OP because it's a similar fabric but I had to dye this because it was originally a stark white and I wanted it to be ivory. It turned out more pink, but that's okay because that dress is a dusty pink, but they're homemade wrist cuffs. I didn't have elastic on me, so I made little button loops, and um, my sewing is very poor on these because I hand sewed them. Let me try to get a little closer to the camera. Which one of these is the nicer looking one? Probably this one. I had to sew the top of this shut because it was open because this was like quilt binding. Sew it on the button. Buttons sewn on, okay. The button loop, she's seen prettier days. Uh, but that's, those are my homemade ivory slash pink wrist cuffs. <laughs> by the way, I dyed these by uh, brewing some black tea and sticking them in a bowl of tea to see. I also have ivory wrist cuffs from Peacock Lorem. They're just nice ivory with a little ivory bow and a little a uh, pearl chain thing. I think they're like 12 bucks um, for the pair. They're nice, they're stretchy. I like them. These are my newest pair of wrist cuffs. I know, ivory being the last wrist cuffs that I actually got. <sighs> Amateur, am I right? Um, but there's a nice pair of simple ivory wrist cuffs because I started building up an ivory wardrobe. These are some really cheap black opera length, not black, blue opera length gloves. They do not match any of the blues in my wardrobe as much as I've tried. I don't know what I'm doing with them. I took them from my mom's closet because she's just got a bunch of weird costume stuff. I guess she would look at my closet and say there's a bunch of weird costume stuff too, but you know. And then my final pair of wristwear. I don't really have many bracelets, so these are pretty much my only bracelets is a white pair of the exact same wrist cuffs as my ivory pair, just a year older than them. And it's just got a little bow and some little pearls and it's nice and lacy on both sides. Again, these were like 12 bucks for the pair. Super cheap, small business, UK business if that's what you're into if you're in the UK or like honestly it's not that hard to get anything from the UK if you're in America. Now the other way around, I hear it's getting a lot harder, and I'm sorry for all you UK people trying to order from the US. But, white wrist cuffs, world of perfect. Now, we're going to get into some other things, and this is going to be a little bit scattered, just because that's, that's how this is organized. I've got two workhorse head bow headbands from Sweet Mildred. They're both side. This is an ivory. It's a very pale ivory compared to some of the other ivories I have. So some of my ivories it doesn't look the best with. But it's nice, pretty. It's um nice heavy weight. It's got pretty lace on it. And I got the exact same one in black. Great standard head bows. So I'm wearing an ivory dress, ivory bow. Black dress, black bow. Perfect. It works out. 
these are the types of things brand new Lolita would need. Why did it take me two years to get them? This is a sweet Mildred like feather headband thing. It's got a nice white lace and like a pink um, sheath around the headband, like pink and ivory flowers, a white feather. I can pretty much wear this with white or ivory. It looks great with the Funeral JSK, the pink OP that I have from Sweet Mildred. That's what I originally got this for when I went to the convention. Because the second day I went back and got that dress, I got this to match, so I had something to cord with it. Um, this was recommended by her. I asked her what she thought would go with it, and she said this. And it's like, you know, sure. <laughs> I'll take it. And, um, it also, so it goes well with the Funeral JFK, my Sweet Mildred Pink OP, and it goes well with my Tarot OP when I paired that with ivory blouses. It's a little bit pinker than ivory in some ways, but a lot of my pinks are more, uh, a lot of my ivories are more like apricots, and so it kind of works that way. So this is pretty good. If you can get this in a couple colors, and they are colors that go with a few of your wardrobe pieces, pretty good investment. It's really nice. It's not like a bow, so it feels different on your head than a bow. So it, it's as comfortable as a bow. It just has a different feeling, you know? Not like feeling, it's like feeling. It's a different aesthetic, a different aura, you know? But it it's just a different feeling headpiece. It's a nice medium standard thing, but it's got a different feeling wearing flowers on your head versus a bow. And so if you want to feel different, just swap out your headpiece. Make a world of difference. <laughs> the other things that I keep in the pocket with these head bows is this. It's just a black bandana shawl mesh thing. You can tie it around your neck like a little scarf, like in the back to the side. You can tie it in your hair. You can make it into a little uh, bandana on your head. Ugh. You tie it like that, like a little maid head thing. You can tie it around your wrist like a bracelet, around your ankle. There's a few things that you can do with this. You could um, gather it and tuck it in the front of your thing like a jabot if you style it properly. Of course, this takes time and like pins and stuff to make it actually look well. But like, if you're starting out and you've got just a plain mesh or at least plain fabric like bandana like this do it man this is something that you can dress up this is something that you can make into something if you don't have anything like i wouldn't go out looking for something like this but if you are starting out in lolita and you go around your house looking for things to wear and you've got something that resembles this whether it just be like a scrap of lacy white like let's say you sew some and you've just got a big old square of white lace you don't know what you're gonna do with turn it into a weird headscarf thing it works it looks great you can figure it out I, I believe in you <laughs> like types of things to scourge your house for scourge things to scour your house for just like bandanas scrap fabrics that look nice when tied in different ways it's not the easiest, but it'll get you through in a pinch when you literally have nothing else. This is a costume eye patch. It is not my good eye patch. I don't like wearing it. I'm not sure why I have it. I've got a better eye patch somewhere. I'm not sure where it is though. Eye patches are kind of cool for Guru, so get you a good eye patch. Not like this one. This one's like a pillow. This one makes your eye feel stupid. Get one that's um cups your eye so that you can blink underneath it freely without it hurting your eye. That's the type that you want. And last thing are not Lolita's uh, things, but are these cute little pleather bat bows that have these pebbled feeling. I've got two of them, because I got them in a set. Um, I think I got them from Kroger during Halloween. I think it was like $5 for the two of them. And they match my uh, Spooky Bat Academy bag really well. I got two of them in case I ever get a twin tail wig so I can have one on each side. 
this is the type of thing you also look out for. Just big filettas, big barrettes that you think will look nice. Since this is just a plain black pleather, I feel like I can make it work. Make sure that when you're buying off-brand accessories, that it's in colors and textures that you think will work. Now the pebbled pleather is a little bit weird, but since I've got a bag that is also pleather, even though it's not pebbled, and has this almost exact shape on the front of it, I think that I can make it work. So look for things that you think would work with other items that you've got. Maybe you'd be surprised what type of things you can get at Kroger. I also hear that Claire's has got some stuff, but I haven't been to a Claire's in a very long time. Maybe I should go. Now we're starting to get into socks. I'm not trying on all my socks for you. That would take forever. This part of the video is already 40 minutes, and I think I talked for like 20 about dresses and like 10 about just my cloth organization. These are the uh, pretty holy black under the knee socks that I got from Devil Inspired. If you want to know more about these socks, look at my Devil Inspired haul. I also wear these in a lot of my cords. I've got the same exact pair of socks in ivory and white as well as black, so keep a lookout for those. I also have a pair of little ruffly ankle socks in black that I got at the convention hall when I first bought my Lolita stuff for my Lolita cord. These aren't the best things for Lolita, but they'll definitely get you through in a pinch, especially during the summer. Like, if you're wearing Lolita in the summer, wear, wear ankle socks. They're nice. They're not bad. They're pretty breezy. And like, we only kinda hate you for showing your knees, but like most of us show our knees anyway, because like, OTKs, more like, doesn't fit my knee to begin with. No stretch at all. Man, I don't care if it's long enough, it doesn't fit. And a lot of socks are just under the knee anyway. I also have a pair of printed tights from the Asylum release from Violet Fame. These are the black tights. When you look at these, these are the black tights. They came like this, they're brown. <laughs> not not sure why, but that's how they are. That's how we're, they were advertised. They're brown. <laughs> so I can't really wear it with that many other things besides Asylum because of brown. I'm trying to figure out ways to wear these tights, and honestly, I just forget that I own them most of the time. Oops. Can't be the only one that forgets I have the matching tights to a set, because the tights don't look good with anything, so I forgot that I had them. They're nice quality tights. They just don't go with anything, because they're not black. They're like a weird brown merchant. I also have actual black OTKs from Sweet Mildred, and they actually go over my knee. Because St. Mildred actually cares about making things that fit people's bodies. So like if you want OTKs, you want them to actually be over your knee and plus size friendly, maybe look at St. Mildred whenever she opens her shop again. Got the same pair in ivory, an experimental pair that she made just for me. I also have a pair of fishnet tights and uh, Tyler Willis hates me apparently. <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. She probably has no idea I exist, but you know, it's okay. Um, they've got a little bit of hole in them. They're from when I used to do competitive dance, but I thought that they looked nice paired under different types of socks. Like, um, over the summer for Sea of Serenity, I did a cord entry into their cord contest. I wore fishnets under my little ankle socks, and it makes it look a little bit more put together but it's still nice and breezy for the summer. Remember when I said that Sweet Mildred made me a pair of ivory OTKs specially for me and she doesn't make them for anybody else right now? Well, this is the pair. The reason why she hasn't released them to the public yet is because she's still trying to find an ivory dye that doesn't look pink. Now, this looks kind of ivory here. Well, let me bring this, which is like a true ivory, out next to it. You can tell it's a bit pink compared. And then compare it to my pinkish ivory wrist cuffs, and it's almost the same shade. So this is the pinkish ivory, this is the pinkish ivory, this is more of a yellowish ivory. It happens. She's experimenting with dyes, that's why I've got like the only experimental pair right now. But I love them, and they're mine, and I'm really happy. Like honestly, they're a lifesaver. I'm so glad that she did that for me. Remember when I said that I have the same exact pair of devil inspired under the knee socks in like three different colors? This is the ivory pair. They are also holy, but they're holy on purpose. 
It's, it's a design choice. But they're nice. I like them. 10 out of 10. Good workhorse socks. They're just not as warm as my feet built ones. I also have this pair of Ouija socks that I got from the Halloween store that I got the Halloween purse from. Um, they are not stretchy enough to be like more than mid calf socks on me. But they're kind of cute for casual cords. Kind of nice. I paired them with Asylum once for a video that I did. I also found this at the bottom of the second ivory sock thing. It's a little uh, hair clip that I made with some little wire flowers that I got from the Puvifel Puvifel flower headband making panel at CS Serenity. But I just made this cute little ivory thing, this little thing. You just I've attached it to a bobby pin. You kind of just pin it in and hope it stands up the way that you want it to. But it's not going to. In my natural hair, this is a wig only type of thing. Or you pin it to another headpiece. Because I've got very thin hair that doesn't like anything. So, cute little thing. If you want to make your own hair accessories, go ahead. It's not bad. I think it would be a lot easier if this was on an alligator clip, alligator clip than a bobby pin. But I don't usually keep alligator clips around the house. This is the headband I made during the Puvifel headband flower headband making thing. It's just a cute little headband. It's a little top heavy, so I want to add things to the side if I'm ever going to pair it with things. It's one of the only red things I had until recently. Um, so if I wanted to pair it with red, I usually paired it with this. Even though I only got this during the summer. This is kind of what it looks like up close. I got a little small flower, I got bigger flowers. It got red floral tape around it. It's nice and cute. This one is a red and ivory bobby pin head thing that I made. Um, it's maybe more like a cross shape. It's a little kinky as well. But it's not bad. I'm just trying to figure out something. Spare buttons. I should probably consolidate where I keep all my spare buttons. These are armbands from a ballet dance I had a while back when I was a competitive dancer. Um, you wear them around like your biceps or something. But like, I'm not sure if mine would fit there anymore. They've gained a decent amount of weight. But you just kind of wear them around your arm like this. That's kind of cute. Yeah, kind of cute. You could also probably wear it around your wrist, which is what I'm intending for it to do if I wear it with Lolita. It's a little bit bulky and weird because it's not meant to be around your wrist, but I feel like I could make it work or I could pin it to be a little tighter. They're kind of blue and gold, so I'm waiting for the right cord to use these with. And same for this pair. This was for a like a um, woodlands inspired dance that we did. It's kind of like a droopy brown with like floral and gold and greens. So I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. I think it'd be nice to wear around the wrist like a wrist cuff, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out something. We're thinking, we're thinking. Deja vu, but three times. These are the same exact devil inspired socks, but in white and a lot dirtier. Can I actually use these more than my, most of my other devil inspired socks? They're holier, they're dirtier on the bottom. I need to wash them. Meh, it happens. Um, again, workhorse socks. They were like seven bucks, I think, on devil inspired. I found them for like four bucks on Taobao. Just get them on Taobao. You can wait for socks. We're in the white extra socks section. These are black and white horizontal striped tights. I got them from a Halloween store. Not really there, of course, but in Gothic, you can do a lot of weird things. In sweet, you can do a lot of weird things. These are kind of casual socks. They're little uh, tan pantyhose knee highs with polka dots and little bows on the front of them. Little bow designs. Um, I don't usually wear them with Lolita, but I feel like there will be a time and place for a cord for these in the upcoming future, maybe. And so I'm keeping them around. These are knee highs that I got, or dirty knee highs, that I got for the cosplay that I was wearing the day that I first bought my original Lolita stuff. Now, I'm not saying the character I was cosplaying was a Lolita. 
but she was definitely wearing like a poofy dress with a petticoat and a bolero and knee highs and Mary Janes and a maid headpiece. It was Elle from Crush Crush, a hentai game. <laughs> not, not the best. But um, I had these tights and for a while they're the only white knee-high tights I had, even though there's no decoration at the top. There's no decoration at all on them. I also got them from like Wish. So like, ooh. If you want to cosplay things, a Wish ain't the worst. As long as you like, aren't wanting something very particular. We're in the home script. We're in the home stretch, my dudes. We're working on moving forward. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, we're moving on to wigs. As you guys have probably been able to see in my Loli Tan wig unboxing video and in my styling a wig with Hime Bangs video, I do have a wig head, but that is not usually long-term storage for my wigs unless I've got a particularly finicky wig. Usually that's just for styling and or displaying purposes. Like sometimes if I'm trying to come up with a look for the top of my head, if I'm trying to place pins or something like for my winter cord, I actually did that on the wig head and then just transferred it over to my head when I was ready for it. First, this is a wig from Lolly Tane. It's my Rococo wig. You've probably seen it in this cord. Insert picture, thumbnail here, I don't know. Um, you can also see it in my unboxing for Weeks from Lily Tane video. I will figure out when you can find these things. And this is one of my favorite weeks right now just because of the sheer number of clips and the fact that it is pre-styled. So I don't have to do anything to make it look good on me. <laughs> Except for my eyebrows. That's the worst part. This is a Lily Tane, um wig. It's a short brown bob wig you also saw in my Lily Tan unboxing video. It's a pear flower wig in brown. It's just a cute little bob wig. You've seen it in probably this video. This wig is my floofy uh, poodle wig. Right now it's in a wig net because I don't have a bag for it. Um, this was the first wig that I specifically got for Lolita. It's very curly. It's kind of long. It is from the brand Bright Lele. I got it from Belladonna Lolita. It's very nice, but very difficult to care for. Not the easiest wig, but I love how it looks on me. It's real cute. This wig is also from Lily Tane. This is the uh, egg roll wig in black. This is the Komura wig from Tony Bow Wigs, which was a wig company at a con I went to. I got this in a lucky bag of wigs with another wig that you'll probably see in here. Another Lily Tane wig. This one is the uh, Air Bangs in Milk. This I got from Wish. This is the L wig that I wore when I first discovered Lolita in a con. It is a pink, fluffy, wavy wig. This is my Ramona wig, also from Wish. It's the same style as L, just in blue, because they accidentally sent me the pink version. No, they accidentally sent me the blue version, but I wanted the pink version, so I ended up making a Ramona cosplay with this because I didn't want to ship it back. This wig I'm not going to show you because my phone is running out of battery. <laughs> That's how long this video is taking. Um, this is the Denki wig. I'm not sure what anime that's from. I don't really care. I haven't been into anime that much lately. <laughs> the bag is just absolutely broken. Uh, it's just a floofy, goes out orange wig. It doesn't really go with much that I have. It's also from Tony Bow Wigs. I also got in a lucky pack. This is my Sebastian wig from when I cosplayed Sebastian from Black Butler when I was like 12. This is my Futaba wig from Art of Wigs. Uh, I've never worn it in Lolita, but I think that there will eventually be a day. This is my wig for I guess from Persona 3. I did a cosplay of that. This is my honey wig. I got it from like eBay um, from when I cosplayed Honey Senpai from Oron. And the last wig is a long brown wig that I got from Wish and it doesn't look good at all. I'm not sure if I can find you a picture of me wearing it. I'm not going to try it on now because my phone is running out of battery. I think this is the exact last thing that we're doing. <laughs> I'm opening up my accessory briefcase 
There's a few things that I don't keep in this, um, namely the things you've already seen. I also have a few just plain lace chokers in various different styles. I don't keep that in here. And my also fine jewelry, I don't keep that in here, even if I sometimes wear it with little bits. This is what the inside of it looks like. Each of these pouches is removable and categorized. This one is Halloween and tarot themed. So I've got some Halloween scrunchies, Halloween scrunchie, my asylum necklace, my sweet Mildred tarot necklace with the hermit on it, a bunch of miscellaneous Halloween things like spider barrettes, my sweet Mildred tarot card earrings, a Agata Designs uh, crystal ball pin. I've got two of these Agata Designs purple bat wing pins. This is a pumpkin barrette. This is a bat barrette. There's two of each of those types of barrettes, by the way. Agata Designs spider web earrings. I got to designs strange brew milkshake pin, some earrings of various bat shapes. This one's just a little bat that has a red body. These bats are little dangly earrings. That's the Halloween set, the Halloween and tarot accessories. These are pearls and cameos. I've got this silver fake diamond choker from Aga Design, a brown cameo ring, these purple cameo brooches, purple cameo ring, red cameo brooch. All of these things right now are from Aga Designs, by the way, because I love this set and I keep getting it in Lucky Packs and I'm very happy. And she also gave me four different of these pearl necklaces of various sizes so they can be layered. So those are the pearls and cameos. One day I'll have more of these because I love them. I love them so. This center pouch is hair bows, an actual bow-shaped bow. Two red Harlequin bows from Aegat to Designs. One blue bow from a random lucky bag I got at a con. This handmade blue like tie-dye bow that my grandmother got me from like a flea market near her house. This little Hot Topic bow um, that's got music notes on it and it's stained and stuff that I got when I was like, it's a two-way clip technically, but the hair clip part is broken, so I have attached it to a bobby pin and a hair tie so I can tie it around a ponytail. Two Agata Designs little red bows with little pearls at the center. And I have the same thing in purple. Two big purple bows from Agata Designs with little gold trim around them. And remember when I said my grandmother got me a um, bunch of handmade bows from a little flea market? This was the second one. This one's got strawberries on it. It's also stained. It's just a barrette on the other side. I need to clean these. I wish they were. We've only got like four more categories, guys. We're doing it. We're getting there. You and me. Thank you to whoever continued watching this because you're obsessed with wardrobes as much as I am. The next category is floral accessories. This is the two-way clip that came with my Violet Fane Funeral JSK. This is a hair comb that's blue that came with a ballet costume I had a few years back. This is a black and orange head bow from a, um, from my dance studio. I'm not gonna list it, but all the dancers in a certain group at the dance studio had these. I've got a bunch of these little green rose cabbage rings from Agata Designs. This is a purple rose hairband. Another one from my dance studio. I'm not gonna talk about it, but I love it. Um, this is a little burgundy hair bow, uh, flower thing with a little pearl in the center from another uh, dance costume I had, and another cabbage ring. Someone in my comments suggested that I start painting my cabbage rings different colors, and that is one of the best comments that I've had lately. I'm very thankful for it. Like, you're up there with my comments from Cupcake Kamisama and Lena for like, amount of helpfulness. Love you, love you followers. I love you all my subscribers who comment nice things and suggestions for my dumb self. Last, uh, second to last category is star clips. Yes, I had to have a section just for star clips. A white iridescent star clip. Big gold star clip. Those are both from Agata to Designs. Tiny gold star clip from Sweet Mildred. It's got a glitter one and a metallic one. 
uh, Paradise Rose Shop DIY kit black bow that I made. It's all felty and soft. Two triple blue star clips from 8 Dodge Designs. Oh, this is Stars and Angel Wings, sorry. Two iridescent angel wing clips. Uh, there. Eh, there they are. Two silver stars with hollow gold clips. These are two white clips. Two gold hollow hair clips. And this is an angel wing and cross necklace from a gotcha design. It's got little black beads on it. I need to figure out more ways to cord it because it's a cute necklace, but I don't know how to cord it yet. We're working on it, guys. We're working on it. That was the stars and angels category. I feel like most leaders have a star clip section just because, like, you can't tell me those chuckle mid hair clips ain't cute, even if I don't got any of them. Okay. Now the final section is miscellaneous. <laughs> Ooh. First thing, I've got this choker from A Got the Designs. It's got this purple cross on it and it's a silver rope. This is a pin I got from a loot crate. It's just like this bronze hand. This is a gold fish clip that says heads or tails from A Got the Design. This is an apple barrette. Two dangly bear earrings. A little heart shaped clip that says love. A little hair clip that's got a rainbow on it. Purple mermaid stud earrings. I've got a pair of It Got to Designs little crown pearl earrings. A few different costume studs in a few different colors. There's black, there's red, I think. I think there's another color. I think there's also like a dark blue. Maybe a purple. Little It Got to Designs black bow earrings. And that's the last pair of earrings because I lost one of the clock earrings from It Got to Designs when I tried to wear them for the first time. And I'm very sad about it. I've never been able to find it and I lost it in like August. So that concludes all of my accessories and my entire wardrobe for Lolita. What was your favorite part of my wardrobe? Do you organize things the same way as me? Probably not, none of us do. Um, how would you like seeing a two-year-old medium-sized Lolita wardrobe? Have any comments about anything that I said so far? Any new videos of mine you want to watch? Let me know. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Let's all have a better year than last year, honestly. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Hello, Editing Cecilia. I actually have a new main piece now because I decided to sew myself a skirt and I got a matching head bow, detachable waist bow, and some miscellaneous bows to add to that. I also have a few more packages on the way because I've got a problem and I need to stop. So I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys now, for real?